You're listening to the Geekscape Network. Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple of Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Matt. And we're a VHS podcast that looks at the trailers, box art, and behind the scenes. And we have a special guest this week. Ashley, say a little something into the mic. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, and I'm back. You really, really wanted to come on for now and then. Of course I did. As a female, it was one of my like life-changing movies. Oh, life-changing. Wow. I don't know. I think it shaped me into the person. As we watched it, I literally was comment, like commenting on how I am the way I am because of certain things in this movie. Yeah. We'll have to get into I don't that know because if I, I noticed things. I don't know if I can remember all of the specific things, but it, it was real. <laughs> if you didn't catch on, you're doing 1995's Now and Then for our third week of Ladies' Month. Truth or dare? Truth. Are you happy? Am I happy? That's a good question. I'm just realizing that I've spent my entire adult life trying to recapture the way I felt the summer of 1970. Hey, Kenny, where's the fire? Softball game, Kendall's Field. It's gonna be all boys. So what are we waiting for? That was the summer when everything started to change. <laughs> hey, Wormers! Come and get them, suckers! Hey! Nuts! No matter what I do, they just keep getting bigger. If we wanted to hear the facts, we went to our parents. I've been thinking about what you asked me. About sex? You say that very casually. It scares me. Have you ever been French kissed? Are you kidding? I don't want to get pregnant. <laughs> but if we wanted to know the truth, we went to our friends. It's like somebody going, boo, ah, that's what sex is. Just about the only thing that didn't surprise us that summer was who our friends were. It's too bad your mother's dead. Somebody needs to teach you to act like a girl. Uh, I say we make a pact. Whenever we need a friend, we're here for each other. No matter what happens in life. There is a female director. There is a female producer. A female writer. And an all-female cast, basically. There's very few men in this movie. There's about four or five men. But it's not... And it's not like one of those movies that has to like be like... Uh... Look at how progressive we're being. It's just like, it just is. It's yeah. like we have a female cast, we have female behind the scenes. And that's why I think this works. Because it's not an old white guy being like, look, I'm progressive. <laughs> <laughs> As these things kind of go nowadays. <laughs> and it's also not the women are better than men at everything type yeah. movie, which I find that some of them are going into. Disney, cough, cough. Absolutely. Um, I think that the the women ensemble kind of thing. It's a coming of age movie. So you do see a group of boys as well. That's almost like, I'm curious why I wish they would have made like a complimentary movie where we got the boys perspective of that summer, you know, like where there's like a crossover because there is a group of boys who are like going through this coming of age time, but we just get the girls perspective. So I don't know. It's just like refreshing to see, but also they don't ignore them. Are you saying we should do a write up? We should write up. A spinoff of The Wormers? Yes. And it's just called The Wormy Wormers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. And they all have, like, really rich stories or just terrible stories. I don't really care. It but... would be great because we could get all of the cast of the younger to play the older versions of themselves. So Devin Sawa would lead it because he's in it. Yeah, and he is still, like, kind of a name. He's not, like, a superstar anymore he's these days. He's on Twitter. But, yeah, he's fucking awesome on Twitter. Um, but he is... Uh... He's around. He's he's there. Yeah. He's in the public eye. So yeah, he could I, lead that movie. I think we can make a treatment. And then we could finally get a sequel to Idle Hands. Once he'd make his comeback right. in the... Oh yeah, we're doing this, guys. We're coming up with this right now. Devin we're not Sawa. even going to talk the movie anymore. We're just talking the wormy wormers. We're bringing, <laughs> we're bringing you back into the limelight here, Sawa. Let, come on, let's hang out. Not to control your podcast, but Devin, if you want to be on the show, <laughs> hit Steven Matt up. <laughs> Actually, you should probably hit Ashley up because we won't pay attention if it's on Twitter. <laughs> I am 50-50 on that as well. 
I Hit usually, us up. I'm like, hey, Twitter's a thing. Open. Hey, Devin Sawa. <laughs> That's great. And then I forget about it for three months. Shoot us an email. We're old people. Shoot <laughs> us. Shoot us a line. Actually, write us a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really, because I definitely won't read that. Yeah, I definitely won't give out your address. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get into our history with this. Ashley already did it, but uh, Matt, did you have a rich history with this? I've never seen this until covering it for this podcast. I've never seen this film, um, but I've been with Ashley for a really long time, and she has talked it up for years, and I've never ignored it. But, like, it actually did take us years to get this VHS. It was, like, trapped in your house for a while. Yeah. And then finally it resurfaced. This movie, <laughs> I love this movie just because, like, it was a big part of something I watched as a kid. I, it was always at my grandma's house. And I would go over there and I would watch this VHS exclusively over and over again. So I told Matt this. And I was like, you have to see it. I see of all, all of Matt's weird fucking movies. <laughs> that he's watched over the years like that he grew up with and i'm like soon we gotta dive into my past then the conversation was like oh we're gonna maybe do it for the podcast i'm like i demand to be on this episode (laughs) i have been begging for you to watch this for so long so steve thanks for agreeing to this (laughs) yeah no problem it's i was really kind of excited to see how well one your perspective on it and see if it's like kind of reflective of how I was but with Stand By Me. Stand By Me is a big focal point of this discussion, I guarantee it. Because it they're very, they're kind of parallel stories in a way. They're parallel, but I think actually it's kind of uh, uh, undermining to like say that like this is just the female oh. Stand By Me. Because it's, it's, di- it's so different. It's a so, of- di- it's a coming of age female movie with them being kids. But it ends there, you know. A lot of dudes that are negative will be like fuck it's just like a rip off of stand by me blah 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 and it's like no it's different and it's, it's just a girl's different. perspective yeah. you know so if you like look up reviews of this movie like some people are pretty harsh about it with the stand by me element yeah i saw some of that where it's just a female stand by me and this did not get good reviews when it came out nope. i was really surprised so i guess in the history of this it came out october 20th 1995 on a budget of 12 million uh, gross thirty seven, so eh, fair, moderate, did well. It, yeah, it, I think it well. probably did that well just for the names attached alone, which we'll get into. But yeah, I mean, it's got huge names, and yeah. we can go right into that because, <laughs> like, if you start with the adults, you had Demi Moore, Rosie O'Donnell, you had uh, Rita Griffith. Wilson, and Melanie Griffith. Yeah, which were huge. Three of them were huge at the time. I don't really know how big Rita Wilson ever was. So. She was decently, um, because she was in like Sleepless in Seattle and things like that. So she, she was, was around. around. <laughs> she was. I feel like that's like what she was. She's just she is a Hollywood player. She's around. Yeah, but she's not like a heavy hitter. But yeah, she, she's, she's a she's known a, name. Yeah, people know who Rita yeah. Wilson. You is. see her in a movie and you recognize her. You know who she is. But I mean, this is the height of Rosie O'Donnell, Demi Moore, and Melanie Griffith. Like nineteen ninety five. Like they were fucking. That's the A list right there. And what I think actually shine in this movie are the children. Yes. And that came down to Gabe Hoffman, who was playing Samantha, which is Demi Moore mm-hmm. in the future. And then we had Christina Ricci, who is Rosie O'Donnell playing Roberta Martin. Uh, we had, what is this? Ashley, Ashley Aston o- Moore, who didn't go on to do anything no. else, because we looked her up, Yeah, and we were wondering if she would continue. She was the only one I had never seen again. And it wasn't that, it must have been a choice thing, because she did like one other thing, and then that yeah. was it. Yeah, and then we had Thor Birch, which, of course. who's Melanie Griffith, playing Tina, 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 Teeny Tercel. <laughs> That's a lot of T's. Uh, and then, you know, and she went on to like American Beauty and uh, Hocus Pocus. She's still acting today in yeah. smaller independent films. Hocus Pocus was before this, though. She was like yeah. a kid in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, she was like starting to be like a little star on the rise. And then she like really took on the 90s, especially the late 90s. I yeah, feel like, like American Beauty kind of rocketed yeah. her into fame for a little while. Yeah. And then you the supporting cast. You had Bonnie Hunt in here. Oh. You who had... I screamed when she arrived because I'm the world's biggest Bonnie Hunt fan. <laughs> Cloris Leachman, which I kind of was more the scream of. I was like, oh my God, it's Cloris Leachman. Everything she's in, I'm just like, I love that woman. I'm waiting for you to say another name that I screamed over. <laughs> well, before we move on. Garofalo? Uh, 
No. Oh, well, before we move on. Which is great, though. I also yeah. am the biggest fan. Cloris Leachman. I just came to a realization when we were watching this movie, and I'm mentioning it now because I don't know if we'll ever kind of get to it when we're talking about the movie, so I'm just going to mention it now. She just seems like in real life, she would be like the fucking weirdest person ever. But like it, her choices in movies, like it's not so much the script. It's like her choices are so bizarre. She, I bet she would just be the fucking weirdest, which is awesome. Which is why I love her. Yeah. But I bet she is just the most bizarre person to hang out with. Simply Chloris. <laughs> like it's, it's very her. She was in an Adam Sandler movie um, where he was a cook. I can't remember the name of it, but she was the grandma who was like, would drink all day. <laughs> and Adam Sandler got up one morning and goes, Jesus, it's not even noon. And she's about, she holds up her wine glass and then the clock ticks right at noon. She goes, and points at it and goes, yeah, there you go. And then starts <laughs> drinking. I'm like, I fell in love with her she's on amazing. that exact moment of that movie <laughs> that I can't remember the name of because all I remember is her. Yeah, she steals the show I'm often. I'm trying to think of what that movie is and I literally cannot right now. <laughs> I think everyone's just like, yeah, that one where Adam Sandler is the cook. Yeah, that's all I know. Okay, move on. <laughs> the little character cameo that I was referring to was Brendan Fraser. Yes, Mr. Because Late I 90s. did not remember, because I haven't seen this movie in a while. Like we said, it was at my like parents' house or whatever. And I found the VHS and I was like, yes, I haven't seen this since I was a child or whatever. And then we put it in and I'm like, that's fucking Brendan Fraser. <laughs> An uncredited, you yes. mentioned. An uncredited right. Brendan Fraser just showing up in me. You know, I being a say, superstar. Still. I would say that's a very significant moment in the movie. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, it's a great moment. When you get when you go uncredited in a movie like that, does that mean they don't have to pay you, or do you think you're just like, could you not put me on the credits? Well, he, he might have just been under contract uh, for some other for something else or whatever, and couldn't but wanted to be a part of it. I'm sure he still got paid, but like a lot of times when they go uncredited, it's because they like are not supposed to, but then do anyway type thing, so they just don't take the credit interesting for it. Hmm. Um, so could, that could be the case or maybe he was just like i kind of want to just maybe he wanted to do like a cameo type thing where it was like he was a superstar in 95 oh, too yeah. so he could do that was this before or right at the same time as encino man was encino man like 93 yeah encino man was like 92 93 okay. so this was later all right when was monkey bone <laughs> 2000 yeah. oh that was way later okay yeah, and then we had Hank Azaria from The Simpsons yes. and many other things. This is crazy because as a kid, like this was probably my first introduction to him. I saw Simpsons barely as a kid. I was like pretty young when this movie came out. Yeah. Um, but Hank Azaria was amazing. I will never forget Bud B U D D. I love him. He's so charismatic, but also like a different character than what he's playing. Because then the second role I saw him in was in The Birdcage. Oh, and he's oh. so ex- like after over this. the yeah. top and amazing. So when I saw those two together, I was like, this guy's special because he can do so much. I took notice of him in the 98 uh, Godzilla because I don't think I had seen The Birdcage mm. yet, but I did see it after Godzilla. Um and I was like, who is this guy? Because, he, you know, in a movie like Godzilla, he kind of stands out with, like, Broderick and yeah. uh, uh, Gene Reno and stuff. Like, he he shows up and it's like, ooh, who's this guy? <laughs> That's actually when I found out that he was the voice of all the Simpsons characters is at the movie theater. And well, after the movie, and we were talking about Godzilla because everyone's trying to figure out if they liked it or not. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, that's a common occurrence for that movie. <laughs> and then my mom, who was with us, she's like, oh, that's the guy who does all the Simpsons voices. And I was like, what are you talking about, mom? <laughs> <laughs> You're blowing my mind apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just, I, yeah, it was. Like, it was almost because I had to be that kid where I'm like, are you sure? And then I'd go home on my AOL. <laughs> It is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it took you about an hour and a half to yeah, figure, figure it out. Figure out just that one thing. Oh my but God. I did it. Get off the line. I need to make a call. Well, yeah. I just want to fact check you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Matt, why don't you just break down the box art on this? Sure. So we take a look, and it is the ladies in uh, jeans and white t shirts or white shirts. Classic look. Classic 90s look. Um, some overalls and things like that. Um, and we've got, we've got our eight ladies 
who we've mentioned already, so I'm not going to name them all again. Uh, and then our tagline of a summer when four friends made a promise to return anytime they needed each other. That time has come. Now and then. They're sort of standing in front of like a pretty sky. Um, and a like, generic sky. <laughs> and, yeah, well, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a nice day out type thing. And uh, this is from the New Line Family Line. Uh, but this isn't a re-release. This is an original mm-hmm. from 95. And uh, it is reviewed as the best coming-of-age movie since Stand By Me. See? So it's the first reference to that uh, from Pat Collins of WWDR-TV. I do want to mention on this cover, if you didn't, if you've never even heard this movie and you kind of missed it when we were breaking down the cast, the younger women are literally playing the younger versions of, the, of themselves. So they're they're never in the scene together in the film. So they're just kind of standing in front of the version of themselves. Yeah, yeah. actually, now that you mention that, this cover makes no sense. Exactly, because it's like the past and the present, which is now the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there, yeah, there, this is a, clearly a photo shoot. This is not a... Mm-hmm. This is a publicity still yes, for the film. this is not a scene from the movie because they are not together in the film at all. And on the sides, of course, we get the eight yeah. split up. So what surprised me is when I saw that New Line had distributed this. I, I just like, to me, this isn't a New Line movie from what I'm used to. I feel like it kind of is a New Line movie. I feel like it's kind of still like marketing to kids to an extent. Uh, you know, set banging soundtrack. So, I don't know, very marketable. And that's what they kind of do. They do marketable stuff. So I don't know. I, I feel like this does feel like Well, it. with the soundtrack, yeah. Because New Line put a freaking soundtrack to everything. I thought it was really interesting that on the back there's literally just a quotation mark with four red stars. And it, it, it doesn't really credit who gave it the four stars. It's down here at the bottom. Oh, it's is it very... A, it, I was looking for yes. the two. <laughs> so if you flip it over to the back, yeah, there's a four star rating. And it's got a tiny little like asterisk that says it's from Screen International. Well, to be the honest, four star review came from. That's weird. I've never seen. I've never uh, seen that format on like a rating. Where they make you search for who actually <laughs> who gave it? the quote. Because there's room. Screen yeah, there's plenty of room. Can be right there. I bet it's because they couldn't get like a big name. Yeah, to do it. it's like not a, like Ebert. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if we look at the stills on the back, we've got some pulls from the movie with the adult cast and the kid cast. Uh, Christina Ricci playing baseball, Christina Ricci and Thora Birch hanging out, the four older women in two different pictures. One looks like a publicity still, though, with like Rita Wilson, mm-hmm. Demi Moore, Rosie O'Donnell, Melly Griffith. They're all kind of like hugging, and it looks publicity-y. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we got the four younger girls like sitting at a diner uh, with the flowers going around to kind of get that late 60s, early 70s feel. I was going to that... say, you have to mention, like, they're almost applied like stickers Mm -hmm. and like in the 90s especially as a girl growing up in the 90s these 60s 70s esque flowers were a huge part of our branding yes like Mm -hmm. everything was like these specific flowers and colors like the yellows the blues the orange the red like that was on everything if we got a coloring book at that age it was filled with stickers of that that you could put that you put on your folders and your even our hair clips the the like logos on our shirts it all was this like 60s 70s flower power kind of looking thing yeah i feel like the 80s got the majority of the 50s and then for some reason the 90s got a combination of 60s heavy. and 70s like in a heavy way because <laughs> you remember when the tinted glasses came back oh, yeah. yeah i had yeah. some <laughs> it's like yeah. a small player <laughs> yeah like this definitely is sort of like we had seen things like back to the future and stand by me which are 50s set but made in the 80s now in the 90s we start to get the 70s set stuff Mm -hmm. as sort of our nostalgia because we always look back now we're getting the 90s stuff that's also how it always goes it comes like well we're still in the 80s yeah we're 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 getting some 90s we're we're like slowly like rolling over you're dabbling into the 90s yeah (laughs) yes we're just putting our toe in yes we don't want to jump in all at once yeah (laughs) I will say also that, oh, never mind. That thought's gone. (laughs) Yes. I went so strong and I'm like, wait, where'd it go? It's okay. Poof. (laughs) And then there, there is one final image uh, that uh, definitely defines this movie and the genre that it is a part of the kids on bikes coming from the suburbs genre, which we've seen everything from E.T. up to this movie uh, into Stranger Things now, like Kids on bikes genre. You know what you're talking about when you say kids on bikes movies. How often, though, do you see a group of all girls on bikes, though? Never. 
it's always boys on bikes and it's not safe for all girls to be on bikes. There's usually like one girl in a group right. that's with boys. Right. Mm-hmm. But this is all girls. And like in the part where I was talking about the Brendan Fraser, and Cam- Brendan Fraser cameo, they just randomly stop, have cigarettes with a war vet yeah. who's just come back and is just like a drifter. Mm-hmm. And it's like so chill, but that is so unheard of. Like even in the past, like... 20, 30 years, you know, <laughs> for well, for female characters. Right. Well, yeah, and it's also a sign of independence. Like, you have, like, just this, like, these numbers, or you know, like, these, uh, what am I trying to search for? Like, just these tracks that we hit, you know, when we get older. We get bikes, mm-hmm. we get cars, and then we get, you know, like, there's... Go. As soon as bikes, we can't go, we go. <laughs> you're allowed to take the bikes elsewhere. It's like, first you get the, the training wheels or whatever, but you have to be in the neighborhood. Yeah. And then they're just like going cross training country. Wheels. Yeah, training <laughs> wheels come country. off and you go where you go across the tracks, basically. Cro- cross county yeah. kind of lines. Uh yeah, it's the first taste of freedom, and that's of course why the genre is so popular, I think, and will continue to always be yeah. popular. Coming you could, of age movies are my favorite movies. You, you do a coming of age movie, if you don't have bikes in it, you fucked up your coming of age movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> What are coming of age movies now? Like a new phone? They're like, Oh, I've now I have a smartphone for my flip phone. I That's never, my back in my day moment. I never saw like Edge of Seventeen, but I feel like that's, that's saying, the modern maybe equivalent. Th- what is her big thing? Is she like applying for college or something? Yeah. yeah. Like that might be a coming of age theme. Well, I thought I thought a really good coming of age recent one was Love Simon. I, oh, that was a really good. Which one? Love, Love Simon, Simon. Mm. came out earlier this year. It's kind of like coming to terms with your own self identity. Yeah. I feel like that's bigger now than just yeah. like getting out of town. It's more like who am I? Yeah, and navigating social media. Now it's like that. bigger questions than than they. Like, yeah. Well, that was yeah part of my like I, I don't know what a coming of age movie is anymore. Yeah. Because back in my day <laughs> it was you know <laughs> bicycles and stuff like that playing outside but now with so much more involved with smartphones and social media and yeah just there's every, always a sense of connection but very I, early what yeah. i think is actually yeah. kind of a, a a thing that's happening with uh coming of age movies now that uh is encouraging for the youth and i i I have good things to say about this incoming generation. Like the 18 year olds now, I think they're really smart and they're they're gonna do good things. Literally, um, he went on like a beautiful like. Were you? A little I was old? stoned and I had went on a rant that he I was, was like, like, the future is like kind of bright, but like, <laughs> um, but like, it's rare. The thing it's about, better than like everyone's doomed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think the 18 year olds like are really encouraging, and what I've seen in some coming of age movies, and then also just like the sort of teen set movies that are coming out now, is a lot of the kids are like violently trying to get away from social media because they were born into it. So it's like embedded in them to be... So like uh, what I like seeing in a lot of these upcoming coming of age and teen movies is they are running from social media and they're like, I hate it. They're trying to shut themselves out from it and escape it. It's and I'm a like, complete okay. rebellion of yeah. that. Because so, yeah, that's their norm. Part of the encouraging thing about this upcoming generation. That's cool. But yeah, yeah, I think that's what today's... <laughs> that's my long answer for what I think today's <laughs> coming of age is. Let me read to you what this movie's about, in oh, case you don't know. I'm dying to know. It's, a, it's all for one and one for all in this heartwarming comedy about the childhood mischief Four best friends who reunite after 20 years. Roberta, Teenie, Samantha, and Chrissy have bu- have been busy growing up, but they always remembered the promise they made to be there for each other. Now they're together again to relive the greatest summer of their lives. Take a spirited ride down memory lane with Christina Ricci, Thora Birch, Gabby Hoffman, Ashley Aston Moore, Melanie Griffith, Demi Moore, Rosie O'Donnell, and Rita Wilson in the delightful comedy that proves girls just want to have fun. I think that last sentence goes against everything that this movie's about (laughs) girls don't just want to have fun because there's some heavy themes throughout this movie that's what i was gonna when you're saying the stickers with the flowers and everything like that that does not match the The tone of this movie is like the tone of the movie at the end is you know hey look look forward to the good times and everything but we'll get into that more when we break it down but there's some heavy fucking themes in this (laughs) which again is why I think I am the way I am. I'm very dark humored, sarcastic. I'm almost like the version Demi Moore. Like it's scary how much my life kind of patterned to match Demi Moore's character and Christina Ricci, I guess. Um, because she like 
grew up. She left her hometown. She became a writer. She's super like cynical. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I get it. If I was like this age in the nineties, that would be me. Right. Yeah. You are Demi Moore for sure. Uh, now Demi Moore was one of the producers of the movie. So I feel like she's kind of the star of the film. Yes. If but there's one sort of star in my brain as a kid, I more identified with Gabby. Hoff- oh yeah. No, that is her. Yeah, that is her. Oh, for a second. I thought it was Christina. Ricci. Well, Christina That's Ricci kind of had like the deal with death thing, which I think you have a little bit of, like, I'm a the little sardonic, bit of all of them. <laughs> the sardonic look at death and stuff like that. But like, uh, you, you, yeah, you're, you're the Gabby Hoffman, Demi Moore character for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that. It's I mean, fucked up. <laughs> it's not fucked up. It's, no, it's, it's awesome. real. It's no, real life. It's, it's great that I can, realize that as fuck it's been a long time since i've seen this movie but then i'm watching it i'm like wow this is really like beat by beat kind of what evolved my life to be i don't know well her character was so hard on herself with the divorce (laughs) and everything like that and you're like sweetie yeah everything's so dramatic at that age but there's a lot of people with divorce but then i had to remember that this was in the 70s yeah and I actually disconnect because I keep thinking these kids are in the 90s. No one gets I divorced had... in the 70s or 69, yeah. 70, yeah. like this takes place. And That's... if they do, it's a big scandal because her mom yeah. started dressing differently. Well, and, and they're in the more... suburbs too. It's mm-hmm. not like they're in like a big you know, metropolitan talk area. In the yeah, exactly. It's suburbs and everything's supposed to be cookie cutter there. So, yeah, yeah that she was a big deal. She was so damn hard on herself. And it's like, it's not your fault. That's all I wanted to keep telling her. But then I was like, it's a movie, Steve, back off. You know, kind of like, just pull away. <laughs> well, in a way, I, I like some parts she's like, is it my fault? But I don't think she harps on, is it my fault? I think she's just like so irate Man. at yeah. the situation. Like she's becoming an adult, but she can't have adult conversations with adults. That's like the most frustrating time of your life as like, at least a everybody girl. can relate to that. But like, I feel like girls really, that's why we are known. Like when we hit puberty, we fight like crazy with our moms (laughs) because like we have so much to say but we literally just can't yet and it makes us fucking crazy (laughs) and she can't have these conversations with her mom and then she takes care of her little sister but she's like a really good support system for the little sister who's not there yet so she's kind of putting it all on herself when she doesn't need to and that's what girls do in general but specifically at this time too because there's like who can you talk to about this? Right. Families yeah. aren't going through this as frequently as they do like now. Yeah, that's a really good point with like, I mean, she's, that character has so many layers and so many different, like, uh, I don't even know how to say it. Like I get layers. I guess I nailed it with that, but um, <laughs> it's just, she's got so many conflicts coming mm-hmm. from different areas, you know, with like, she's got to protect her sister and her mom, even though I don't blame her mom for getting divorced, maybe yeah. the husband sucked and you know, she needs a new life. And then there's like all these different, like just laser shooting her. <laughs> yeah. That's how I pretend it is. It is great that this movie does give you the perspective of her because you don't really know why the parents are splitting up. You hear, mm-hmm. you overhear a fight, you see them leave and then you just see the progression. You don't mm-hmm. understand their relationship because a lot of movies now I feel like try to do too much where then like then the kid finds out oh it's way more complicated. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like movies now they they won't just be like sometimes you don't know what's going on. And yeah, okay. no, they try to justify divorce nowadays whereas in back in the days like there's no reason to You don't know why. Yeah, and I think that's a very 90s actually look. And sometimes it's it. not your yeah. place to know why. Yeah. Well, and then after it seems I I think it was like maybe but I think after 9/11 we were always Ooh. trying to figure out why things were yeah, happening. We have to why, why did things go bad? Yeah. Also in storytelling, like we have to hand feed it to you. It's like we have to be completely clear on everything. Well, yeah. And that's also because now we're trying to sell it to so many different people. Yes. And that, so there's like, yeah, there's so many things. But anyway, you want to get into the fun stuff? <laughs> sure. First, how about the trailers on this? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was, I was finding some way to get us back into the trailer. So popping this tape in, we immediately get movie line magazine promo. This was a scuzzy trailer. Like they're just like amping up the paparazzi fucking like dirt on people's lives. Like this was gross. Literally, they were like, is this the one where I commented to you afterwards where they kept showing the covers on all these things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all of the women, it says like 
beauty, sexy, sexy, whatever. And then the men, it's all successful. Um, yeah. Like Tycoon. All of these things. And I was like, what the fuck? And then they would show like like uh, one of the black actors and it would be like, hilarious. Um, like it's always like stereotypes. No, let me tell you, they showed hmm. one black actor. It was all white people and one black yeah. actor at the very end. Yeah. Wow, you guys paid attention to this one a lot more than me. Because all I saw, I was like, eh, it looks like soap opera covers. And then I'm like, this is the weirdest thing I ever said. And then I just go back to like, what is this? Oh, it's Dude. a magazine in Hollywood. And then the trailer was over. And I'm like, shit. Missed yeah, it. no, I got very political. <laughs> no, I, and I did too. And I didn't mean to. Like, I didn't yeah. think I was going to. I was like, ooh, this makes me feel weird. So check this one out on the uh, YouTube because this one's weird. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Like you went into like, how does this make me feel? I'm gonna pay attention to it. I immediately was like, what is? What the fuck is this from? And I went into like stack geek shit. <laughs> but here's the thing: like you've never seen this film, right? Mm -hmm. I have seen this film hundreds of true, times. True. So I'm like, what else is on this that I don't remember? And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, because as a kid, I feel like after the first couple of times, I just fast forward it to the beginning of the movie. Yeah. You know, like I just skipped over it and then I did remember some of the things, but like this one blew my mind. I was like, this is supposed to be a feminist movie. And you're like, look, you can be sexy too. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, we, and then we followed it up with this soundtrack promo, which great. Which I is mean, this like movie Saturday has Saturday morning cartoon like type soundtrack. stuff. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, the soundtrack is fucking incredible to this movie. So you... they must have spent a lot of money. Oh, yeah. This is before the the sort of tarantino takeover i mean tarantino was around it was doing like pulp fiction and reservoir dogs and stuff but like this is before sort of the tarantino takeover where everything had to have like a bomb ass soundtrack so this just has a bomb ass soundtrack they weren't like trying to cash in on anything they here. were capturing a very specific time i think they nailed it well, yeah i mean they did it with what new line did it with mortal Kombat. yeah that great soundtrack with that too and i they did it with austin powers oh mm -hmm. my god this the is... best i own that soundtrack by the way <laughs> This all, is what all they three do. of those movie They're soundtracks so are good. good. This is what they do. They're one of the best marketers out there, period. Oh, and Matt and I have also, have you ever talked about our rule of a VHS? Oh, yeah. We have a rule that say if we ever sort of make it, we have a ton of just expendable have, money. Yes. Um, what we're going to do is every time we watch a VHS and see a soundtrack promo, we have to go on like eBay, Amazon and, and buy it. the soundtrack. So this would be one that we would have to buy. No, it, the rules are it has to be before the movie starts. So right. even if we've never seen the movie, if they promote the movie the movie soundtrack, we have to buy it immediately. <laughs> we have to buy the soundtrack. All right. I like that rich people. <laughs> a lot of the VHSs who go hard on promoting a soundtrack, they're pretty fun they have soundtracks. Some, they have some pretty banging soundtracks. <laughs> I this is Ooh, we're well, gonna talk about one of the movies that has a banging soundtrack in a second. Go ahead. Oh cool. <laughs> um this soundtrack because I watched it so much, was definitely a soundtrack mentally in my mind, which is kind of weird for I was a 90s kid. So I was constantly singing songs from a different time, like all the time. To this day, the num like most of the songs that just pop in my head and I sing, you'll notice it because you've lived with me for so long. Are from um, the soundtrack. Are from this soundtrack. I always do the knock three times yeah. on the ceiling if you want me. Like that song always in my head. Usually because our radiators are pinging and I'm like, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, iconic Chicago, soundtrack. folks. Chicago. Yes. <laughs> We're talking about radiators. <laughs> so many fucking radiators. Uh, yeah, no, this is this is a great, great soundtrack for sure. Uh, I, there was definitely a thing happening in the 90s where we had a lot of 60s nostalgia uh, for music. I just remember that was all you heard on the radio. I, f I feel like in school, too. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would go to school, all the kids would know all the oldies. Yeah. You know, it wasn't so much what was popular then. You know, I wasn't going to school and singing Toe the Wet Sprocket. I was going to school <laughs> and singing fucking Tony Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> and it just seemed like that's what we were sort of being <laughs> embedded with. Anyway, little, little Matt singing 60s songs and watching Dateline. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I mentioned in another episode that I did watch a lot of Dateline as a kid. I listened to your podcast. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I would fucking love to hear, like, Little Matt, ex like, if you missed an episode of Dateline, you're like, hey, Little Matt, can you catch me up? Oh, I got this. <laughs> oh. I know everything. <laughs> For better and worse, it wasn't much different then than it is now. <laughs> it's pretty much the same from about fucking seven years old to now. <laughs> We're just tinier. <laughs> yeah, I was just smaller, but I was just you trying might... to sound just as smart and being just as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> And next we had Theodore Rex. We're not going to talk yes. much about this because you can go in the past and listen to our podcast on it. 
But uh, yeah, I highly recommend. What the hell? Recommend. I highly recommend that podcast episode. Terrific, fun time. Don't <laughs> worry, I couldn't remember benchmark. That's what I was trying to say with the when you get your bike and you get a car. Oh yeah. What did I say? Well, I can't even remember what no, I said. Just layers. Something stupid. <laughs> layers. <laughs> yeah, layers. I remember layers. Um, but the just mentioning quickly the Theodore Rex trailer. This is this is the trailer that made me like have to seek this movie out though. Like it's a great this, trailer. yeah, it's a great trailer. But you can hear us talk about how we actually felt about the movie. But damn, this trailer hooks you. Uh, and then we had Bed of Roses, which I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Exactly. I about screamed. I heard the voice, and I was like, "Is this fucking Christian Slater?" In, in like a Sweet November kind of like sad romance I movie. It. I was like, "Is this Sweet November with Christian Slater?" And Matt was just like, "Yes, it is." <laughs> Bed of Roses. Yes, I've never seen this movie, but I remember this cover from the video store all the time. That's why I knew what it was when it, the trailer started. I think if we can find a copy of this, like, can I come back and we do this movie? <laughs> if you could find this, yeah, yeah. sure. I feel like it's probably impossible. Yeah. If we come across it, we'll pick it up. It's such a weird movie. <laughs> it's a weird looking fucking movie. <laughs> if you want to see what it looks like, we put it up on our YouTube channel. So yeah, it's a weird one. It's a full trailer, too. Yeah, it's like a long two and a half minute trailer. But the rest of these trailers are all teasers because we had next the Mortal Kombat coming soon to VHS. <laughs> which is just you know like kicking punching tech music and then mortal combat 1995 after that trailer rolled i looked at ashley and i say i always think that movie's gonna be better than it is but it's never never good <laughs> you're too hopeful yeah then we got the mask now on vhs trailer this oh. was the other one i was thinking has a banging soundtrack because yeah. i have yes. this soundtrack another new line yeah just yes. wow. Makes every time I see this trailer, even though this was a 30 second spot, makes me want to watch this movie. It's the one mask, of the best movies ever. The Mask still, is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, yeah. I, I'm still pissed off I don't have that VHS. I, I don't know why. I'm sure it's everywhere. You need to pick that one up. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have that one. <laughs> and then Dumb and Dumber, now on VHS, <laughs> was the, the, you know, the last one. And I, I grew up on Dumb and Dumber. Oh, I absolutely. wore out the VHS on this one. This we're, one, we're big Dumb and Dumber yeah. fans in this room. I would yeah. say. Well, I was. A, I mean, my childhood was Jim Carrey. Like that was yeah. my yes. childhood. I love that it because it's the now available on VHS. It's like not the full trailer. It's just the highlights of the ridiculous shit. Of it's like, like Jeff Daniels laughing hysterically, and then <laughs> Jim Carrey screamed, doing the most annoying sound in the world. In the yeah, car, yeah. And then them doing the thing with the ketchup. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's oh, a good highlight reel for God. what's to come it with that brilliant laugh. movie. It's like I get mad at myself. I'm like, you, it's so stupid. And you're like, it's the funniest thing ever. It's <laughs> you, so good. You could just play that clip and I'd be like, take all my money. Yes, it's so good. <laughs> I fucking love you. Oh. oh, I love you, Lloyd Christmas. Um, <laughs> and then I, something really weird, and I've been noticing on them since I've been putting more and more of these trailers up. I saw Certified Original Macro Vision. And it says, in order to ensure that the program you are about to watch is an original and of the highest quality, this video cassette incorporates the exclusive macrovision encoding process. This is this is the encoding process that if you were to try to do deck to deck copying, so you'd put this in the VCR that you have plugged into another VCR and hit record, up. it would come out with yeah. the lines. That's what macrovision did. It like it was straight like fuzz lines throughout the entire screen. Uh, it actually still, it, so it makes my vid box shake. Yeah. Uh, you can see it on my YouTube. It, it doesn't fuzz it out and everything, but it, all the other VHS I copied the trailers from, I mean, they're VHS quality, but they're still, this one just like has a yeah. little shake. It's a warble. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, anytime I would rent Macrovision movies from the video store, I'd be like, fuck, I can't copy this one <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid. Those fuckers. <laughs> you had a sick problem. <laughs> and I still got all those tapes, so I guess you could still say I have that problem. Yep. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get into the highlights of this film. Feature presentation time. Woo! Start out in 1991, and we get introduced to all the adults. Yes, in Indiana. Which is where I'm from. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's like shocking how similar this Shelby, is. Indiana. Shelby, Indiana, which I'm not from, but... I don't even know where Shelby is, but I've heard the name. I'm from there, and I'm not sure. Yeah. Take this out? I don't know. Don't kill me. You know where Shelbyville is? Well, Shelbyville's like right next to where I grew up. Yeah. But that's different. I know. But it, <laughs> I just want to be like, you know where something is in Indiana. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. And then uh, we get Demi Moore. She's become a sci-fi writer or Samantha has become a sci-fi writer because she was the weird girl. I'm doing air quotations there. Uh, we had Roberta Martin, 
who's Rosie O'Donnell, and she's now a doctor. And mm-hmm. she was played by Christina Ricci, who was the tomboy. Yes. And uh, who had the mother die. Yes. So she went through some serious <laughs> shit. Like, literally, as we talk about each kid, we can tell you something sad about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Chrissy DeWitt, which was played by Rita Wilson, and she is uh, pregnant, about to have her first child. And I did not know this, but that is supposed to be her childhood home she's still living yes. in. Yes. No, she's she's the one that. that doesn't leave and has babies. Like there, she's well, because that's... that's still their tree house outside. Yes. And also, um, when Demi Moore comes in and she, Samantha walks in and she's like, she goes, ta-da, to show her the house because she hasn't seen the house since a kid. And she's like, looks the same as when your mom decorated it. Yeah. And she was yeah. like, yeah, I know. So like, she's very nostalgic, but I want to talk about Bonnie Hunt later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and as a kid, she's like really naive and over sheltered. She's, you know, like, yeah, over sheltered by her mom, by her mother, Bonnie Hunt. Yeah, she's like twisted brain into everything's flowers and feminine and sheltered. And like, you should just be like a good girl, like, and a wife. I think her mother, yeah. I think her mom even gets like shudders a little bit when she says the word sex. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. When she picks up the watering can and the, oh, oh, great sex talk. Yeah, <laughs> and then <laughs> Tina, which is played by, oh, I think I wrote this down. All right, I did. Uh, Tina is played by Melanie Griffith and is a successful Hollywood actress. And as a child, she dreamed of fame, pretended, you know, she would get in front of a mirror and, and make, I think, like a... Some Oscar kind of, speech. Is it an Oscar speech? Yeah, Something like that. Speech. Yeah. And it, really, she just has, like, parents who don't pay attention to her. They are, like, I want to say they're, like rich swingers or something yeah. and they just like don't care that they have a kid and so she's alone a lot mm-hmm. and i think it's adorable because she like daydreams of being famous because i think it's the attention seeking element of her because she has no attention at home but then like she'll go sit on her roof and look at the drive-in movie and recite yeah. every line and i'm like that's so sweet <laughs> but sad <laughs> this one was me as a kid yeah <laughs> like if i had to your relate. parents spoiled you oh yeah no my parents <laughs> but i didn't have a lot of friends and like i didn't have any brothers or sisters in the yeah. house so i just sort of you were alone was a alone a lot and like mm-hmm. yeah my parents were great but like i didn't have anybody else besides them so mm. i was this kid you're the teeny yep if i had to if i had to pick Steve, if you had to identify as one of the personalities <laughs> Uh, I would, um, whew, that's tough. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I'd go with Samantha. Samantha. Uh, the weird kid. Yeah. Yeah. More because, you know, I'd try, I I played sports. I was a fat lead, but I was also into comic books. So it was kind of like really. Into uh, genre yeah, stuff. Like polarizing. Mm. They're like, wait a minute. Are you a nerd man or a jack? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I also love the Samantha thing. She's into like the occult and all of that stuff, which yeah. I've always been very big into. So just more. Yeah, so when the adults get together here, it's for Rita's baby. And uh, they basic... Well, the whole movie... Well, at least the flashbacks are told from Demi Moore's perspective. Mm-hmm. She's the narrator in this. It's almost as if like she's returning to her childhood home and she remembers that how important that last summer was. Or like that, that one summer The time summer they made together. the promise. Yeah. When they yeah. said that they were gonna... It was the summer of change for all of them, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... It would never be the same after this Mm-mm. summer. Uh, so I think they literally say that yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah, at the end, when it does kind of have like the sort of wrap up of the kids' story, it's like. You can almost it's see like, it. Too. It's, it's not, we're not going to hang out like this anymore. We are different people, like, but we'll be there for each other. They're not so to. against boys anymore. Like, Roberta's interested in boys. And mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, they're all going to yeah, kind of separate a little bit. Yeah, and we flash back to 1970. Uh, we get the girls playing uh, Red Rover. Red Rover, yeah, that's Red Rover. Red Rover, send that booger picker right over, or something like that. Send. Oh, I I should know this by heart. I'll get it later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we get right into the thick of things of like just we see them growing up, uh, and then kind they of wanna, they well they want the independence too. They want to mm-hmm. build the treehouse, so they want to make money. They're to make saving the up money. Uh, that's part of their thing. But what really sort of drives the story is the seance in the cemetery and uh, what's his Dear name? Dear Johnny. Dear, Dear Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Um, that's sort of the thing that 
you know, we think it's going to be about them. I mean, as a first time viewer, I thought you think it's going to be about how they try to get money to make it. But nope, that's not really what this movie's about. It's really about the, that night and how that night kicked the off. The treehouse is the inciting like goal almost because they're saving up money. They are spending a little bit of their money to get milkshakes. They meet the weirdo in town, Janine Garofalo, who's mm-hmm. like a great cameo. She's like the mystic in town. And she's got like a great Joan Jett haircut and just like, she calls them boys. Yeah. And Chrissy's yeah. just like, we're girls. And she's like, I, I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> it's See, so great. So like, so weird. They're by using their money for the treehouse, they're meeting people who they're going to later need to go to for like this bigger story. Right. Well, yeah. And then when they do the seance in the Dear Johnny, they think they, I, I don't know what they think they do, but basically the tombstone breaks. This is... Tombstone gets struck by lightning, right? They do the seance. They're asking to call upon Dear Johnny. It's a tombstone yeah. on the side. And they don't know. They notice it's a boy who died younger. Yeah. So they're like, want to know what happened. They're, they're And then Chrissy, who's always getting picked on. This girl with the pigtails who is oversheltered, they savagely bully her in a friend way. It's oh, hilarious yeah. the whole time. And she gets them so good by pretending like... Mm-hmm. She's like panicking and she's like... He's cold. He's so low. And like the wind is picking up and the thunderstorm happens. So lightning strikes and it scares them. And they all run away. But they go back to get something and the tombstone's busted. Yeah. So they think that the spirit has been released and that something is haunting them almost. Not haunting, but they need to like... Samantha's sleeping and she sees shadows at night and it feels weird. Well, don't they have to like... Well, I don't know why they have to exactly figure out the mystery other than it's fun for the plot. But I think, aren't they trying to like put him to rest? Yeah, well, now yes. they are. Yeah. Right. But, well, they're trying to find out the mystery of his murder because they find out that this kid was murdered. Yeah. Once they find out from and the they grandma, don't know. Yeah. The grandma's attic. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The I feel like the haunting aspect, which is sort of this over. This is not a horror movie. This is like a coming of age drama but really this haunting thing is the overarching thing this is the this is the whole movie but haunting is basically just a synonym for puberty but this this, so so but this is a coming of age how they do this like when you find out when you become an adult like things are darker than you really know or or allowed to know or want to know or want (laughs) yeah they go to cloris leachman and they're like you were around during this time, what happened to dear Johnny and his mother? Or yeah, something? and she's like trying to vacuum and she's like, and like she's just, just eating them. crumbs yeah. everywhere and yeah. vacuuming with lemonade that tastes bad or like yeah. is maybe spiked. I don't yeah. know because grandma's crazy because it's but worse, She is a character, especially at this time. There was a hush hush of this is a suburban society where we don't talk about negative things, and these kids are like growing up and being like, there's some fucked up shit going on. Mm-hmm. Why is no one talking about it? And then it's revealed that the weird guy in town is Johnny's father that's, you know, walked the in. The weird and... guy? His name is Crazy Pete. Crazy Matt. Pete. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. The, Jesus I did, Christ, I did Matt. the air quotes Have for weird soul. guy. But yeah, the weird guy in town. I, the Crazy Ralph, if you will, I will for this say, movie. will say, Crazy, crazy Pete, Pete, if you don't want to be known as crazy, maybe you don't ride an old-timey bicycle around the cemetery at night <laughs> as the first thing we see him do it is that but of course there's more to everyone's story and that's like what we find out throughout the movie well and then when they're trying to find out about this uh the more probably the most heartbreaking scene in the movie is when uh christina ricci finds out about her mom's death when they're trying to find out about the death oh. of dear johnny jesus this out, movie's so sad <laughs> that's a that is a fucking heavy scene and for this movie may i say christina ricci steals this movie oh she's so good oh yeah she's fucking amazing they there's get... no doubt in my mind that she was gonna be a fucking superstar like watching this yeah, performance when, when she finds out about her mom and so like you can just see her like emotions going all over the place she's sad that her mom's died and then she's like she was really beautiful wasn't she and then she's just like immediately on like a tirade after and she's that. angry she's like, yeah which yeah. is like the most realistic sort of well it's like her mom died in a car crash and that's all she ever knew that she died peacefully like you know that's the whole thing and then she was raised with her dad and her brother and the dad i guarantee is like doing the best he can it's a rowdy household she's very weird about her femininity like she tapes down her boobs Mm -hmm. and i was just like i feel this girl man i feel Mm -hmm. it (laughs) like you don't want to hit puberty too early before all your friends do right so like she's very calm i feel i want to say she's the most like 
internally conflicted. Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't share a lot and she has this morbid sensibility because her mom is dead. But then, yeah, she reads this paper and it says like she was in pain for hours and like Mm -hmm. then gives like the greatest monologue performance when she shatters a mirror. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. The feelings are insane. Oscar moment. It's basically (laughs) like, honestly, it it was so emotional. If and you're like, if you're an actor right now, and they're like, "Okay, give us a scene, a monologue scene." I, I Roberta, like, Christina Ricci playing Roberta, in now and then from 1995. It's so <laughs> it's dynamic. It's yeah, fun. it's a good. It's really good. That fucking that whole section is really good. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about Roberta. Like, I'm gonna jump when they decide to like bike out and like go on their day adventure, mm-hmm. and they run into there's a group of boys. It's a guy and his brothers, I believe, the Wormers. Mm-hmm. led by Devin Sawa. So they're like giving each other shit the whole time. I think there's a baseball game. There's a guy that says you hit like a girl. Roberta loses her mind. There's a mind. fight. It's very Sandlotty kind yeah, of scene very, in that movie. It's a combination of all these different movies. Yeah. But they go to this lake. So much happens at this little pond thing because Roberta oh. dives in and pretends like she's dead. Yeah, that's... Because yeah. that's the way yeah. she deals with death is being... Yeah, and Making so, jokes about it all the time. Teeny and Samantha are kind of being like, who's going to give her mouth to mouth? And Chrissy pushes them out of the way and is like, I'll do it. And speaking of punching, Chrissy, when, oh. when Roberta reveals that, hey, I'm fine, man, Chrissy just... Wah! Yeah, she fucking slaps the shit out of her because she's like, don't you fucking do that to me ever yeah. again. And yeah. it's just like, yeah, man, don't maybe do that. Oh, that is well, the... Chrissy, I mean, that it shows the, the difference in their characters is Chrissy takes someone that she loves the Very most serious. serious possible. While, you know, you know, the Rita was more like, hey, it's just death. It's also revealing like in a group of friends so close, like you still have one best friend. And she's like, you're my best friend. Like, yes, we're all friends. But you're my best friend. But this also, I think, signifies the they're outgrowing each other oh yeah well too. outgrowing each other's shit because like i i feel like yeah. i related to this too with my group of friends growing up um that like there was a period when we were like 12 or 13 where we started to kind of realize that we were outgrowing each other yeah. when we couldn't put up with each other's shit anymore yeah. and i feel like this was a good signifying moment of that a very true thing because that's something i mean i dealt with with my group of friends was you know yeah you outgrow, you outgrow people. It just happens. It's just the way it goes. But or yeah, or you grow in different directions. Yeah, kind of like, and I feel like that's what happens to the adults in like in the future. Of this, but like going through like when we have all this, like I, I really like the library scenes, the you know like the attic scene where they're finding information, it's like researching and, scenes. Yeah, and even the tarot card where they're like, oh, they got the murder tarot card. Did you see the yeah. look on her face? Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> But when they get together for the second seance and then the guy who's working at the cemetery is like, no, there was, I dropped there's, it. There's a ghost. He's like, I hit it with my truck. Oh yeah. yeah How exactly. amazing is that scene though? Like yeah. they are like, oh my God, there was a bright light yeah. in a foggy cemetery and the fucking headstone of dear Johnny is floating towards them in the air. I would have crapped myself <laughs> as a child. Yeah, but right when they find out the truth, they're all like, they kind of shrug their shoulders like, yeah, let's just not do this anymore. This is stupid. And yeah. Was, they're like, like, oh, we're, we're not kids anymore. We're past yeah. this. We're, yeah, this yeah. is over. This part of our life. This is over This was now. our last, like, stupid adventure. Yeah. It seems like, yeah. 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 Well, that's that's another, I think, necessary component to these, uh, the successful coming-of-age movies is to have that final adventure. Yeah. But this one does it really well because it is about outgrowing each other and growing up and outgrowing these things and mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, I think this is a really but good. I will say it's not all sad. It, no. There's still some really fun moments like, yeah, right after Roberta fakes her desk, they go around the corner, see the wormers skinny dipping, and they're like, what's a hard on? <laughs> yeah. Looking at butts. <laughs> Looking a lot at of butts. butts. And then they steal their clothes and it's a fun time and there's a happy 60s yeah. song playing. Yeah. yeah. That was That was cute. Like when they steal, they're like, you come back here with those clothes. Those, yeah. those dudes are fucked. <laughs> then they have to like run down a dirty road and pick up their like tidy yeah. whities on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really funny. funny. It's a funny scene. Uh, I do I do like when, um, was it Samantha and Teeny? Yes. Uh, she oh. goes to her house to tell her like, hey, my parents are getting divorced. And she's like, oh, don't worry. I read in the future like half the people are going to get a divorce. And that's, of course, our like 
timely joke. Yeah. That, yeah. That like these type of movies always have to put in. There always yes. has to be. I don't know. Would you call that an ironic joke or I don't know what that a is. A sense uh, of irony. It's, like, it's, irony. It's, yeah. Mm, it's like, like a, a if, uh, foreshadowing, foreshadowing kind of joke. Yeah. Kind of thing. Cause like we know as an 90s audience, it's like, oh yeah, nobody's together anymore. <laughs> oh, that's normal. <laughs> Which is also now rubber band back because so many of us like wait so long to get married. Now divorce rates are down. <laughs> it's because you like take a minute yeah. and figure it out. And we're all broke as fuck. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> Give me a job. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the, so we've got moments like that. We've got another great well, moment. Well, I, yeah, sorry, because uh, I never got to finish it with. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So when they're, they're in the rain and she cracked, uh, she like split her favorite necklace in two, made two friendship Bracelet. bracelets. Yeah, bracelets. Uh, Samantha's part falls down the drain and she goes down there to get it and like, oh, it starts flash flooding and then like she gets trapped in there. But Crazy Pete comes around and saves her. And one of my favorite, this is my favorite moment in it's the movie. It's the best moment of the Is movie. when they're like hugging, Samantha and Teeny are hugging each other and they're like, you know why are you so weird and everything like that yeah. and he's like well i guess i just thought that no one ever really wanted to talk to me because i'm different in a way yeah or i'm weird he, he's always like why are you so afraid of me and yeah they're like because you're you walk around town all weird and stuff and you don't talk to people and he's like people it doesn't seem like people want to talk to me but I guess I understand, so I just don't talk to them. Yeah. And it's like the most heart... This man has like four lines in this movie, and it like changes them forever, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like, it was, you know, like when he said that, I, like there was a part of me where I'm like, oh, I have a heart, I just felt something. Yeah. It went away. Don't worry, Immediately folks. after. <laughs> Repress I was like, that feeling. <laughs> I was like, what is that feeling of, like, warmth? warmth. Yeah. <laughs> this is toward the end of the movie, but I think it's, like, one of the most dynamic moments. Oh, yeah. Because you're just like, man, this shit's heavy. And then he he ends up teaching Samantha something even more. Like, there's the lesson of the story at the very end. She's like, did I ever tell you that I went back to the cemetery that night? And, yeah, and saw him crazy pete is old or dear johnny's father and they're like what and it's just crazy like when you're little yeah. you tell your friends everything but when you get to that point you, you keep you gotta keep to stuff, yourself yeah. yeah and they're like you never said that and like it's because she learned a moment or a lesson from him that it was so personal yeah and she needed it to herself yeah yeah i mean really after this in the movie, it's it's stuff I kind of don't need, like because we go back to the adults. They have and, the baby, and they have a baby, and I'm like, and, and this is my only real con with the film. I think the wraparound and the adults are almost useless. It's unnecessary. I would throw them out, but I get why they do it. It's like yeah. oh, these are famous fucking women. It's fun to see, and like how far well, they, they sell the come. film. They do. Their names yeah. are attached. Well, but like I do enjoy it just because I mean it's ingrained in my well, body now. i would say like imagine this imagine if we saw demi moore riding in whatever she was riding in the taxi and you know she's or was she driving she was it? driving so, okay. yeah, she was and driving then she there. starts to just think about the past and then we go into the story like that where she's narrating it and then we come back to see all the like how that you know re how they turned out because i feel like the very beginning of that with like melanie griffith like i just thought melanie griffith and Demi Moore just seemed like vapid and useless. I'm going to say that I I think I need it. Yeah, I've, I've got something to say, but I feel like you're going to say the same thing that I'm going to say. I need so. it because we start like really seeing how they were raised, how it affected them. Because we start with Rita Wilson, her character, uh, Chrissy. She's got the tight curled curls and her hair mm. is up and she's singing and there's powder puffs and she's very classic the room is like her mother's room and everything yeah. like that and we see that side of her when we go back we literally see her being mothered by a woman who is so crazy and we're like that's exactly why she's like that you know like the, we can see their yeah. personalities line up that's basically what i was gonna say too like uh but then I, i'm gonna add the ending on there i like the wraparound because you see them all show up and everything is so happy and they've got their perfect lives like rosie o'donnell's the doctor and Rita Wilson's the mother, and they've got what they wanted. They've all sort, and they're all happy. 
And then you see... Oh, no, are no, they? No, that's what I get to. Um, and then they, then we see what made them. But then we come back to the story at yeah. the end, and they all reveal how unhappy they well, all I, are. I don't, <laughs> and that's well, what I, I don't, like about it. <laughs> at the beginning, I don't see them as all happy. No, they're put, but they're putting on the facade. They're like, oh, look at the successful writer. Look at the successful actress. Say, look at this doctor. Look, she's having a baby. Everybody's, everybody's like where they need to be right well, now. We, and then it comes back, and they're like, I'm so unhappy. The thing <laughs> is, is we already learned what we needed to learn. These adults don't add to the learning. Yeah, but if we just at the very end, it's just like, oh, I have a baby in a treehouse. Everything's okay. I think "Ah." I think the ending is almost like the point of the story. It's like, yeah, our our lives are facades. Like, there's literally dialogue where she's like, "Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm a respectable writer who won't get married." Like, you know, they just like keep making fun of each other. And then at the end, it's like a moment, a simple moment where she has a baby. The friends are there, and the next generation is playing. But the whole point of the summer, it's a random summer in the middle. But like that little things mean the world to them, you know? So like that day that they all return, it's going to mean so much more later. Right. But they're you know? so, they're, yeah, they're not happy it's like in, the, in the big picture. Samantha in but my the little brain, moments make up Samantha the happiness. Samantha in my yeah. brain hasn't thought of this summer in years, you know? But no, the fact that she's back there, she's thinking about it and she's like, that really meant something. So then I think that this new thing that happened in their lives, like them reuniting, having the baby, in a couple more years, they're going to be like, wow, that was like such a great moment between us Yeah, like I needed that. It wasn't as big because obviously they're older. Uh, Like we don't see it. I just just don't think it needed. I I think it needed the, I didn't mind the end because I actually felt like those actors were, you know, hanging out and like, and like ripping each other. That beginning to me, cut it off, better film. Yeah, I, I mean, did. that's just Different how I feel. Yeah, folks. I wholeheartedly yeah. disagree, but okay. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, well, did and, you? And it was funny too, because like when I, I was sitting there looking at the, after watching it and thinking about it, and I just say like, "What's make the mistake I always make and read someone's awful review?" Never do that. Oh my god, I don't see. I don't understand. Like, you know how sometimes you read a review of it and you're like wow i never thought of it from yeah. that perspective this was that but it was just like wow i never thought of that because it's fucking wrong <laughs> you know like <laughs> it, it was just the whole thing of like the stand by me and how it's an exact replicant and it's like i don't think it is at all i don't think they don't find a what, dead body they're what, just like was, interested what kids was are the interested replicant? in death that's just but yeah. there was Period. no dead body there was no <laughs> yeah, dead no, body yeah it's, it's not a replicant a spirit. it's like it's a metaphor for so yeah. many things in their lives. Yeah. It's like not the, the literal. Only, the only thing I th- saw that you, I can't remember. There were no adults in Stand By Me where there's a wraparound. Was there? No. It's well, just no. a period. Yeah, Richard Dreyfuss is writing about it, but that's about it. It's a period piece about oh, four shit. kids that's who right. like get into some dark shit and then they grow from it. That's about the No, I, I think it was just because it was four kids. That's what it is. And on then, bikes, yeah, on and bikes. they were girls. <laughs> and it's a period piece, like it's the same yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, but it's not. It's so different. But the stories are different. You can still be different, but have similar concepts. Oh yeah. By the way, like going back to the cover, why are we all in white shirts like this? It's just the nineties, I think. Oh, it's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, what were you gonna say like a second ago? Oh, I was just gonna say, did you notice at the end, like who Chrissy's character was having the baby with? Oh, Rosie yeah. O'Donnell is the no the her husband. Did you not Rita Wilson's husband? Because you didn't pick it on. Oh no no, no. who was Rita Wilson's he husband? He said he comes up and when she has the baby, he he like misses the birth, but he walks in and he's like, "Hello, dear," like that. Is Earlier, it the nerdy kid? It's the nerdy kid that who says sits it. next oh, to Chrissy okay. on the bench, and he's like, "Hello, dear," or whatever, and then she's like buzz off creep or something like that she and marries him and, and has they a baby stay with him. inside <laughs> and i'm like that's so funny i don't know it's but funny you didn't but notice it, it either you know it's it's depending on how you look at it, it could add to like the sadness of the character that it's like she stayed with somebody that she just like met in childhood and or, had a baby with and got married but and then again it could have been like they hated each other when they were younger but then they like reconnected later and they were mm. like oh I don't think for okay. this movie. <laughs> well, yeah, Rita Wilson's character is pretty sad. So I, <laughs> I think she does just stay with the same person and then gets married and then stays in the same house but, and then has a baby, which is man. just my fucking nightmare. <laughs> I, now that you sit there, like this is like changed how I look at Rita again, even though I already knew Rita. But, or not Rita, I'm sorry. Uh, this changed how I look at uh, Chrissy. This is, uh, changes how I look at Chrissy now that I just found out that like she 
literally married the first guy that like kind of hit yeah. on her. That's what I see it as. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I, no, no, I was listening. Like, I was listening. And I go, and I just kind of like got into a, like a deep thought in of like way, who this reminds me of back home, which I won't mention. But I was like, oh, we all have those people. Oh but in gosh. some way, though, like when you talk to them, they will say. She never lets on that she's not happy. She's the happiest of them all. But that's just like because that's how she was raised. Yeah. And like that is her version of happy. When you look at Samantha or anyone else of the characters, they're like, this is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. but they're playing as if they live in the 60s, you know, like, but that's their thing. Mm-hmm. That's cool. As long as they're happy. Awesome. But it is yeah. very sad because it's like, this is her only option or something. Yeah. Or she thinks it's her, you know, or she, she married she the first guy that said hi to her. She didn't need to pursue any other mm-hmm. options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's the one who's smiling, but you can see behind her eyes. She's like yeah. tortured. <laughs> I don't know. I think she's happy. I, I think just think to everyone thinks. else, everybody else is like, well, no, I, I mean, I think what they're trying to do with her, like, because she bashes on her, you know, Demi Moore's character and Melanie Griffin's a little bit. They're like, and it's kind of like, there is some jealousy there. I think I, there, there is jealousy that yeah. they went out and did everything, but almost I think it's more of like a hurt. I think where she's not happy is that her friends aren't close to her anymore. Right, except she... for Roberta, who always checks on her. Yeah. But her friends like pretty much abandoned her. Yeah. And like In her eyes. In her eyes, right. yeah. But it's like they went on to pursue, but they didn't keep in touch. So she's like, you guys abandoned me. And so the fact that they're coming back, she's like, I need to keep you in my life because you guys literally abandoned me last time. Yeah. 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 Do you think uh, <laughs> Chrissy's ever visited either one of them? Nope. No. Yep. That's the thing, though. She and her brain thinks that they abandoned her. And they should they won't visit. visit. Yeah. Yep. And but they she doesn't visit. visit. Yep. Don't yep. worry. Yeah. I've moved away. <laughs> I understand what this is. Yeah, I kind of always got that. I, I, always, I, I did also, too, like that how um, Roberta and Chrissy stayed close. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, you had Tina and Samantha, who both followed somewhat the same path, but didn't stay close. Yeah. And I kind of felt like they did a good job of mirroring that with the kids. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, when Chrissy punches Roberta... I mean, that pretty much is, you know, like, okay, maybe I should stick around this girl because she really likes me and she would take yeah. care of me. Well, right. she's like, she was going to sacrifice, she was going to bring me back to life. You know, like she was going to yeah. try. She's the only yeah. one who like fully loves me, <laughs> like loves me as like everything. And yeah. the others were like, ah, you do it first because they're kids and they don't know what to do. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to fucking do it. Yeah. And then Roberta like spits in her face and she's like, how fucking dare you? <laughs> Oh, also, people who put plastic on their sofas should be burnt. Yeah, that was a big thing. That was a thing in the Fam- 70s and again in the 90s. Families, <laughs> I would go over to families and I'm like, wow, there is a lot of noise happening on this couch. <laughs> I hated it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, well, <laughs> I knew someone. I had to go to their house. And every time I sat on the couch, I'm like, this is freaking stupid. <laughs> like, what is the point here? Yeah. Well, I, I think... I think it's pretty obvious, but I think we should still ask the question, uh, do we recommend this movie? Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend this as a coming of age. I I mean, there's things about it I don't like, like I said, but uh, as a whole, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I love this movie. First time I've ever seen it. I, I immediately love it. I think it's fantastic. A uh, great movie, great coming of age movie, really well done. Also, super hard to find, so if you do come across it in a thrift store or whatever, definitely pick it up because this is not this is not one that's everywhere. Yeah, I was thinking that too. This doesn't seem like one I've ever seen. I mean, mm. not in the wild, not normally. Right, yeah. right. This is this is one to pick up if you come across it, for sure. Okay, so we are on to the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. Ashley, what are you putting in? Oh, well, every week we put something in the museum oh. that we really want to learn from if it's not good or really love and want to treasure. We put it in our museum every week. What is your contribution to the museum, Ashley? I don't know yet. Can you do one? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I I, you want to go? Uh, you can go first if you got one. Already. All right. Mine's a crazy Pete when he saved. I mean, I already said it. It was my favorite point in it yeah. where, where I actually felt like, I was like, oh, there's feelings. There's warmth. I got too many. That's why. That's yeah. Sometimes crazy when Pete, Sometimes when you love a movie too much, it's hard to like really pinpoint. Crazy Pete though is a great 
like I don't know. Watch I, it just for Crazy Pete. I think but, I, I'll put a I'll put a moment in there too. Then if we're gonna do it that yeah. way, uh, I'll put in the finding out about death moment. It's definitely the most dramatic moment in the movie, and it's kind of a bummer. But like the finding out about the uh, not so much her reaction later in the, the attic, but the book scene in the library when they find when she finds out about the mother. I think that scene's incredible. Yeah, I'm gonna put something that we didn't even talk about. But because it's so dark and gloomy, something that's a little lighter, Roberta, for the first time, liking a boy. Uh, yeah. Devin's out scene. when they share a Coke, and he's like, can I kiss you? And she's it's like, a great what are you scene. mumbling? And he's like, can I kiss you? And they do a little kiss, and she's like, if you tell any one of your brothers, I'll kill you. Yeah. It's a great it's, scene. But then their faces are like, they like each other so much. And it's like the most simple, genuine part of the movie. And like most girl movies, I feel like follow like the boy story. This is the only ounce of that you're going to get in this Mm -hmm. movie. And it's kind of refreshing to see. I love both. I love all the dark stuff too, but that one, it's just simple. So throw her in there. Uh, Also when they're by the garage door, I think they were. They're playing basketball. Yeah. yeah, And he comes by and he like kind of wants to like stick around a little bit longer, but it gets that like one second Mm -hmm. of awkwardness. And I don't remember which friend does it. Maybe it's Christy, but she's just like, what was that about? You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he, and she's just like, I don't know. Maybe. They're not so bad. Yeah. They're not so bad after all. And yeah. Then, like that ounce of like. And then Christy's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, your younger friend who's not hitting the maturity level would be like, what the, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like in the very basic sense that to me in the movie is when her character starts to change. Yeah. She deals with a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, it's funny too, because that just mirrors exactly what happens with boys too. Yes. Like there's always the one boy who gets interested in girls first. First. And all the other guys are like, yeah, but they're girls, man. It's yeah, like they're we... stupid. And then he's like, you know what? She's pretty good at sports. And like, she's really nice and interesting yeah. and stuff. And they're like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> stupid. All right, we did have something fun come in today, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it to you, Matt. Okay. We got an email. Okay. And it is from Trucker Bill. I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Trucker Bill. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so this is so exciting. This is. Uh... <laughs> you printed it off. Yes. That's how excited you were about this. <laughs> I didn't even want to open a new tab to like read it off. Um, found you guys a few weeks ago on the road. It was a trucker. Trucker Bill. Trucker. Got it. Yeah. The first episode I listened to was Graveyard Shift. My son and I used to watch it when he was little, probably around your ages. He probably shouldn't have, but he loved action, robots, and horror. <laughs> what, what boy doesn't? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, we used to watch the movies. Uh, we used to watch movies all the time together from our old rental store. Uh, I'm from Wisconsin. We had some really strange ones. If you ever get time, please review these old ones my son and I used to watch. A couple of these I don't know. Okay. Uh, I bet bet Matt knows at least one of them. Oh, I know he knows at least one. Fortress. Okay. I've got that on the shelf. (laughs) Nice. Space Truckers. Okay. That's an awesome movie. Yeah, It's got Dennis Hopper in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Robot Jocks. I've got that on the shelf. Yeah. Uh, Mind Warp. I don't know what that is. Uh... I think I know what that is, but I've definitely never seen it. No. I may know what it is, but I may not. This one I'm trying to figure out too. Nemesis. Oh, Nemesis. Yeah, I know what Nemesis is. They have okay. that bucket of blood if we ever want to so it's not. So <laughs> it's not Star Trek Nemesis, right? No, no, no. It's Nemesis. It's Albert right. Pune who did Dollman directed that. You're, you're, you're such a nerd right now. <laughs> <laughs> <D-d-d-dork>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention these films. Uh, hope you guys do. Love the trailers. Takes me back. Nice. Thanks, Trucker Bill. That's awesome. Yeah. Greetings to you, Trucker Bill. I'm still trying to figure out, like, did he just make this email up to email us? Or do you think he just goes as Trucker Bill? I hope he does just go as Trucker Bill. I hope that's just his thing. I hope that's his official. And is Bill short for William? Trucker William? Hey, Follow up email, Bill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we. Uh, oh no 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 no! Matt's got the follow up. That's all his job. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're. Uh, I love I love all these movies that you've mentioned. Um, I haven't seen them all, but I, I this is this is my area. 
this is where I operated in as a kid. So I think uh, me and your son would get along swimmingly <laughs> if you guys are watching those movies together. Uh, it sounds like me and my dad back in those days. So it, that's really nice. That's awesome. I, I, this is what we do this for, right? So yeah. thanks for writing in. Ashley, Matt, plug it. Plug your podcast. Plugging, plugging, plugging. So Matt and I do another podcast called The AF High List. It is a podcast where Matt and I are going through the 100 greatest American films of all time. So movies like Citizen Kane, Casablanca, The Godfather, Wizard of Oz, Lawrence of Arabia. I believe that is the top five. I, I am amazed is, that my brain can remember that. Is the that. Order. Um, but we are completely stoned when we watch them and then completely stoned when we get to talk about them. So... It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it's not so much a film analysis as it is like high thoughts while we watch the greatest American films of all time. What we think of the movie, but then also just what we think of besides. <laughs> it's a good example is Some Like It Hot. We watched that film, talked about it, Stone, but also talked a lot about the film Sorority Boys. <laughs> it's always an adventure with us. And yeah, so come along uh, for the ride. It's off, a great time. Off topic, fun. Uh, I, I mean, we... When we, I was on the show for Star Wars. Oh, yes, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, I liked it when we occasionally went off topic. Or Matt threatened to kill all Republicans. <laughs> I did not threaten to beat up, not kill. I did that in another no, I, I, I thought you threatened to shoot someone in the face. <laughs> no, wasn't shooting. You'll just have to listen yeah. to episode number fifteen, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah I think it was. I, I think it, I think it was fighting, but yeah, I threatened to. No, I didn't threaten. Oh no, I, no, no! no. They, I yeah. I requested a thing, but that got cut from an episode. <laughs> we basically set you up for a joke to diss Trump, and you dissed all Republicans. Yes, <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> I actually think the shooting of one particular Republican was in another podcast, and I had to cut that. Yes, that was never on ours. No, yes. that was in a. It was rage, never on ours either. <laughs> it was maybe for the rage carry too, but uh, maybe, maybe maybe we don't know. Love that movie. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Uh, but that's all I got, pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Listen to our podcast. Uh, it's where all good podcasts can be found. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And you are about to be at Days of the Dead talking at... Um... Oh, yeah. This episode is coming out right before that. So if you're listening to this episode as it drops, uh, do stop by, if you're in the Chicago area, uh, Days of the Dead on Saturday, which is in Schaumburg, Illinois. I'm doing a panel. I'm talking about independent horror movies. So if you like hearing me talk, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm going to try not to sound like an idiot uh, on stage with uh, three other very incredibly talented filmmakers that I'm like, don't know why I'm included with them. <laughs> because you're wonderfully talented. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, but yes, uh, very excited to do that panel. At Two o'clock Saturday, Days of the Dead in Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, the panel's free if you have tickets to the event. So come see it. Come see me. Uh, come see me. Try not to look stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll be okay. <laughs> you love to talk. Especially about myself. So if they <laughs> ask me any questions, it's about me. Uh, prepare for me to make the time go over in that uh, talk. <laughs> Do it. Speaking of time going over, we are going along. So let's uh, remember, you can rate and review us on iTunes. Uh, you can listen to us on all kinds of things. And if you're like Trucker Bill here, you can write Matt at analogjonestof at gmail.com. And Matt here might might respond to you. Yes, I will. Um, if you write mean things, uh, I'll get stoned and respond to them. And if you write positive things like Trucker Bill, I will soberly respond uh, glowingly about uh, your movie recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, remember to be kind. Rewind. Set a course for the unstoppable Jack and Jen podcast in the impossible Star Trek Voyager being the material Wine is the vehicle just like milk for your cereal Here we go, blast into the Delta Quadrant Uncharted territory, but we're on it Support me another glass of Cabernet Cause it pairs with a different parts of the galaxy Never in my life was a crew so brave Never was a time that I liked rosé But you learn something new each and every day To explore new things is a Starfleet way Podcast hailing from the geeks 
Escape Nation talking Star Trek with the wine persuasion. So you wanna live long and prosper fine? Then you better tune in to Seven of Wine. And this is Seven of Wine, where we review an episode of Star Trek Voyager and a bottle of wine. 